Hi everyone, my name is Norma Barigree. I'm Professor of Data Science and Statistical Learning in the Department of Maths and Stats at UL. This is just a brief taster of some of the material that we will cover on the Professional Diploma in Data Analytics. Increasingly, companies are recognising that data is a really valuable resource and that allows us to um, find new insights about our world, be it learning about our health, um, being able to predict our behaviour, optimising our resources or making better decisions. Because, data are trying to, or because companies are trying to become data driven, people with data science and analytics skills are in really high demand. So this year, data science specialists were in the top 15 most promising jobs according to LinkedIn and roles in this space have grown by 46% over the last two years since 2019. Other key skills in demand were analytical reasoning, business analysis and scientific computing. Everybody wants to be doing the data thing, but there's a lot of confusion about what the data thing is. The lines have become really blurred around what statistics is, what data science is, what data analytics is, what machine learning is, and so on. I really like this definition of data science and analytics, which I'll use interchangeably, and it has three key pillars, math and statistics skills, computing skills, and the domain or business knowledge skills as well. At the interface of these three key pillars, we have traditional statistical research, we have data processing, and we have machine learning. Statistics forms a key component of this, and that's going to be my focus today. Given that description of data science, what skills does a modern data scientist or data analyst need today? And you can see that we have a very long list of key competencies that each individual would be expected to have. Of course, the reality is that no one individual is going to have all of these skills. So modern data science is all about building a team with a set of complementary skill sets that tick all of the boxes on that list. Often companies will hire computer scientists as data scientists who are excellent on the computational aspects, but don't have the statistics background to be able to make full use of their statistical knowledge. And that forms a key component of the data science and analytics pipeline. What is statistics? Well, we know that data are being generated on a huge scale, so we have big data. And the question we want to answer is, how do we use that data to get valuable information from it, draw meaningful conclusions from it, and ultimately make good decisions about our company? Statistics is the science of learning from data and trying to make decisions when we have uncertainty, both in the data measured and in the models that we fit. This can sometimes feel a bit painful, but it definitely gives you the tools to answer some very, very interesting questions. Now, the term statistics has gotten a little bit lost and mixed up with the term data science and data analytics. But I would argue it's not a full rebranding of statistics and statistics is just one component of these. Statisticians think about data in a very, very different way. So while you might have data science, machine learning, AI type algorithms that are black boxes and tend to be more focused on making predictions, statisticians worry about identifying and understanding key sources of variability and uncertainty in your data. We want to build white box models or transparent models that allow us to fully understand the relationship between our variables and our outputs, how we have made particular decisions and what were the reasons we got there. Statistics really has three key components. The first is data collection, and this is one of the areas where statisticians differ quite a lot from others in the data science field. We worry a huge amount about data collection, the who, where, why, and when, and how the data were actually collected to answer the question that we're interested in. The second step is where we take the data and we do some descriptive statistics. This is where we create some summaries of our data, we visualize our data, and we really try to understand and identify patterns in our data. The third aspect is where we build statistical models to make predictions using our uncertainty aspects. I'm gonna go through each one of these three steps in a bit, little bit more detail. The data collection component is the most important step in, in any data analytics pipeline. But it's often the part that's either completely ignored or given very, very little thought. Data can be collected in a very ad hoc way 
without really thinking about the problem that we're trying to solve. And there's a belief that if you collect huge volumes of data, there has to be some valuable information in there. And unfortunately, that's not just the case. In fact, often as you add more data into the problem, you simply add noise to the process and you make trying to find the valuable information a lot more difficult. But ultimately, no matter how complicated your data science or statistics or machine learning algorithm is, there's nothing it can do for you if your data are poor quality. So your data collection part is really, really important. There are three key questions again, as we're starting out on any data analytics project. The first is, what is the question that we're trying to answer? The next one is what data are needed to answer that question? And then finally, how are the data measured? Are they currently measured? If not, do I need to measure them? Where are the data stored? Are the data linked across my process? If I'm looking at batches on my process, do I have a unique ID linking those batches throughout the process that were under study? One of the biggest issues that we come across is that just getting access to the relevant data is a huge barrier in many data analytics projects in industry. This takes time, it takes effort, it takes money, but the payoff at the end in terms of the decisions you make and how certain you can be about those decisions is enormous. Once we've our data collected, the next step is to clean the data. This is one of the hard cells of data science and analytics actually, because a lot of this work is very hidden, it's unseen, but it's fundamental to the modeling process. When we're cleaning our data, we want our data to be complete as we can, so we don't want to have very many missing values. We want it to be consistent, we want it to be accurate, we want it to be valid, and we want it to be timely, which is particularly important if we're running real-time analytics. All of these come under one big umbrella of data consistency, which is key. Not all data are created equally. So data that have these particular attributes are far more valuable than data that doesn't. The next step in the pipeline is data exploration. And this is where we start to summarize our data, we start to visualize our data, we start to try and identify key patterns in our data when we're looking at our visualizations that we create. Dashboarding tools like this one here give us a way of monitoring our process variables and identifying issues in our process very quickly in real time. Finally, then we have the data modeling and predictive analytics piece. We can have our models being as complicated as we like. So this is a very, very complicated, non-parametric uh, statistical model that's looking at the relationships between a lot of different inputs and an output. We can look at pattern recognition tools that identify groups of in individuals or units that are behaving similarly. And finally, we can use classification tools that can identify the reasons why our process is more likely to fail than others. To show you the power of a data analytics project, I thought I would share with you our experience working on a data analytics case study with a medical device company recently. The company were monitoring several of their process inputs using sensors. And they had two key aims. They wanted to understand the impact of inputs on different parts or different product outputs. And in particular, they wanted to do that to reduce their scrap levels. So that was costing them a lot of money and it was also affecting their production capacity. We had very key project aims. So the company viewed this as a data-driven decision-making process. They wanted to improve their cost effectiveness. They wanted to improve their market competitiveness. In all of this, they wanted a white box model, so a transparent model that would allow them to see where variability in the process inputs was relating to variability in their final product output. And they really viewed this data analytics project as a key enabler for future automation projects in the company. When we went into the company, the data were stored in a really fractured and inconsistent manner, and we couldn't do any statistical modeling as part of that. Process engineers were spending a significant amount of time per week just trying to access their data and trying to put it into a format that was usable. So as part of the project, we actually created a centralized database system that linked all of the data that we had throughout the company. 
That was the first time their process engineers could access their data quickly and reliably, and it allowed them to um, monitor their process in a far more um, you know, centralised way. Once we had the database system then set up, that enabled us to start looking at proper data analytics methodologies. We created an interactive click Sense app, which was monitoring critical process variables for the process engineers, and so they could very, very quickly see what was going on in the process in real time. The project also had several very large um, consequences for the company. The first was where we looked at a particular point in the process where they had tried to run a project. They believed that that part of the process was a key driver of scrap rates. And when we looked at the information in the data, we found that that project actually was not um, needed. So that saved them about a quarter of a million euro. Our work also identified the location in the process where um, things were most variable and were contributing most to scrap. And that resulted in them changing their employee training system and reduced scrap levels by about 140,000 euro per annum. The final was that a, a, a new inspection policy was created, a first in first out inspection policy was implemented again on the basis of the information that we found in our analytics pipeline. So data analytics had a very positive impact on the company. So if you come onto the, the professional diploma in data analytics, you learn about how to do all of these things, you learn how to master and interrogate data, how to ask the right questions of it. You'll learn how to create easy to understand visualizations, interactive dashboards, and how to model your data appropriately and test the hypothesis that you're interested in. And importantly, you'll also develop the skills to communicate your findings to key stakeholders in your company. And really that's empowering you to turn your data into actionable advice. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions on the program, please feel free to contact myself or any of the program team.